to see the sun. I can't help but think about the Lord and all the things he's done. He meets my every need. Yes, he's been so good to me and I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done. If I start and now until I die, there'd still be many more. If I can mention only one, I'd have to thank him for his son. Now that's enough to praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done, I'm gonna lift my hands and praise him. Amen. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Lord's house this evening. Good to see you tonight. We're going to open up in prayer in just a minute and have a congregational song and have a special. And then we're going to go right into preaching tonight. Amen. Looking forward uh, to hearing these guys preach tonight. All out of Galatians chapter 5 verse number 1. And uh, so we should get a good shot in the arm tonight from that verse. Amen. But I'm glad you're here tonight. Let's all stand to our feet. And uh, I want you to bow your head with me and pray as I pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, the opportunity to be back in your house this evening. I pray, God, Lord, for the service tonight, God. I ask you, Spirit of God, if you would uh, take control of it, everything said and spoken, may it edify you, lift you up, and bring glory and honor to your name and be an encouragement to the saints of God. Use these men of God tonight, God. Just have your way in our sanctuary, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sing with us tonight. Amen. Let's sing, Oh, I Want to See Him. As I journey through the land, sing it as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him, he will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leads whatever be time. Let's sing now. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in valley lows I look toward the mountain height, 
And behold my Savior there, leaning in the fine, with a tender hand outstretched towards the valley low. Guiding me, I can see as I onward go. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice on the last. When before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, he does save the key. And he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love him so. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of a saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now you can be seated. among us all that he does when he walks among us all that he does all of his mercy and all of his love if the pen of the writer could write every day, not even his words could ever contain how much I have been blessed. Well, there's warmth in the winter, flowers in spring, the laughter of summer and the changing of leaves food on my table a good place to sleep i've got clothes on my back and shoes on my feet i have been blessed Poor that will raise and a voice that can talk hands that can touch and legs that can walk ears that can listen and eyes that can see I've got to praise him as long as I breathe I been blessed. Oh, 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 I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way could I count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank him so kind God has been good he's so good I have been blessed a father and mother who nurtured and raised my brother and sisters and the memories we've made our pastor to lead us this altar to pray all oh, stripes that can heal and a blood that can save i have been blessed we live in a country it's the 
the greatest on earth. Our flag stands for freedom and what it is worth. She stands in the harbor, Miss Liberty calls. Oh, all have gave some, oh, but some gave When I'm so overwhelmed, that place where he hides me under his wings is not just a song, but he's the reason. to you tonight. I think it'd be all right if we praise him, but don't you? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Remember something tonight. These guys are going to preach it. I'm just giving an introduction. You're already free. You're not working for it. I said you're not working for it. You're already free. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. The day you got saved, you was liberated. Liberated from your past, your faults, your failures, your sin, your condemnation, your guilt, your shame. And he puts you into liberty, into freedom. And look, not because of who you are or what you are, but because Christ made us free. And look, and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, which means this. It's possible to get wrapped up in something else. So listen to these guys. They're going to give us six, six things, six different men, and I were preaching. It's going to be shorter tonight than what I normally preach. Say amen. Amen. Amen, amen Brother Arnold. Amen. I'm on. Yeah. It was, <coughs> if we ever been a time that we need to stand fast or stand firm, it's now. Amen. And Jesus Christ, he, listen. Christ died for our sins to set us free. Now, this is why I can't see good. And uh, 
Christ died to set us free from sin and from a long list of laws and regulations. Not free to do what we want to do, but free to serve him. Uh, thanks be to Christ, we are now free and able to do what was impossible before, to live unselfishly to Jesus Christ. You know, back in 1969, Ralph Wong went to uh, uh, Vietnam. Christ saved my soul. He got me into my heart. He died for all of my sins. Amen. Not just a few of them, but all, all, all. Listen. Uh, let me find my, find my place. <coughs> uh, faith in Christ brings true freedom from sin. Uh, we are free in Christ, and yet freedom is a privilege. We are not free to disobey. We are free to serve the risen Savior. Let us use our freedom to love, and to serve, and not to do wrong. Many, many years ago, Christ came into a, to my heart and changed me from, from the outside. He changed the inside. I'm still the same on the outside. I look the same, but it's in here, preacher, that Christ died for me. Not only for me, he died for everybody, for everybody. Everyone that will accept him, he will save you. He will save you. Let us remember to stand firm with Jesus Christ and never give up. There are a lot of things, that, like you said this morning, that's going to happen. If we ain't got the goods, we'll never make it. And thank God that he told me that we all have the goods if we belong to him. He is a savior. He is my savior. He is my savior. And I love him with all my heart. Amen. That was good, wasn't it? Huh? I am so thankful, so thankful that uh, Brother Arnold will still get up here and stand and do the will of God. Uh, the Bible says there, it says that you are freed, amen. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty within Christ hath made us free. Now, I want to tell you something tonight. If you've ever been saved by God, you are free. You're free from your sins, church. You know what? That sin that used to hold you in bondage and used to keep you down, you're free from that. But see what? Here, Brother Jeff, here's the good thing about it. Is you're not just freed from sins in the past. Oh, no, that's power. There's power in the name of Jesus, amen. So the sins of your past that have you been freed from, guess what? You're freed from the present sin, too. Mm, Y'all ain't getting none of this like we got it. I'm talking about your past. Is for You're freed from your past sins. You're freed from your present sins, and guess what? Oh, praise God. You can run on this air, you know, popcorn preacher. This is a kernel about to pop right here. You're freed from your future sins, too. You know what? And the Bible says that if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. You know what? You can come in here, and you can worship God in liberty. You can come in here, and you can worship God in truth. But if you can't worship in this place, you're not going to worship when you get out there. So you ought to be able to come in here and have that liberty. Why? Because that freedom that you got, it didn't come cheap. That freedom you got, it cost. It cost a life. The life, not a life, but the life. The precious, precious life of Jesus Christ.
That's what that freedom costs. We ought not be taking it light. Huh? This is the land of the free. I ain't worried about this place. I'm not worried about this land. I'm not worried about this country. I love this country, but I'm not worried about this country. This ain't my home. This is not where I belong. <laughs> if you can't worship here, what are you going to do when you get If you're a misfit right here, right now, mm, you're going to be a misfit in the life after, I promise you that. If you've ever been saved, blood-bought, born again, when you get to heaven, there's going to be a whole lot of worshiping. Because people are going to understand and they're going to realize that, you know what, that freedom that you've got, it costs a price. It costs a price. And Jesus shed his sweet, precious blood for me. Stand fast. It takes action. How do you stand fast in the day that we're living in right now? Because of that freedom that we got, the liberty that we've been set free from our sins, we've got to stand fast. Not in us. We'll fall, but we got to stand fast in Christ. That's where we stand fast in. It's an action word, church. If you're not putting forth the action, guess what? You will not last. You won't last. I've already read the book, We Got the Victory. <laughs> All we got to do is walk. All we got to do, all that's required out of me, church, is just to walk and follow him. Action. Stand fast, man. It is an action and efforts from us. We must know how to stand in this day and hour. The Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God, not a piece of it. And if you read the armor of God, guess what? It protects the front, church. Why? Because we got to keep moving forward. If you turn around and you head back, guess what? There's no protection. God knew that. God said, follow me. If you're going to follow somebody, you're going to be going the right direction. And you'll be able to stand, stand fast. But it's going to take something from you, church. You've got to make a decision. You've got to make a choice to stand for God. It says the yoke of bondage. I like that right there because I've been set free from the bondage. I was in bondage for 20-something years. You know, the devil had me bound up in sins, and I, had, I, was, I was carrying the chains, man, of sin. But you know what? I don't have that bondage anymore. I've been set free, and you have too. The yoke of bondage, don't be deceived by what you hear. There's a lot of stuff going on that people just say, yep, 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 yep. But if you get in this, and you read this, and you study this, and you meditate on this, and you spend your time in this, you won't be hearing all that other garbage going on. There'll be some victories in your life if you study this. Mm. There'll be joy if you study this right here. The media's going to tell you what they want. They're going to tell you what they want you to hear. But I got the truth, church. I've been set free. It's true because I live it. I live this. It is truth. Mm, I love it. In fear of what is going on, but read, read what God says and know and understand. Ask for wisdom. This is what's going to help you. That he will lead and guide our steps. His word will always. Always expose the snares of the devil. His word will always expose Satan. But if you don't study it, and you don't meditate it, and you don't take it and hide it in your heart that you might not sin against God, you'll never know when a snare is coming your way. People set up snares when they hunt. And why? They set up snares to trap things. Huh? Don't fall into the traps and the snares of the devil. The will, uh, it says that it, uh, God's word will expose the snares of the devil. And his will always will give you an escape route. Study and know that God, st that, that, uh, study and know that God stated it, God started this, and God's going to finish it. Amen. You're free tonight. Worship like you're free. Amen. Galatians 5, 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I thank God that I serve a Lord. I serve a God, the person I put all my trust in. It's not somebody who's bound me. I don't have to do anything. It was all about what he did on a place called Calvary. And because of what he's done, I can stand firm in where I'm at today and say that I am free. I'm free at last. Free at last. Good God Almighty, I am free at last. I don't know about you, but I've been in that bondage. I've been in those dark places. I've been in the bad stuff. I've been held down. I've been bound to the ground. I've been where I couldn't praise God. I've been where I couldn't worship Him. But there's a man named Jesus who put me in a place. I can raise my hands and give Him glory.
glory. I'm free today. Three things God has freed us from. We're free from the bondage of doubt. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I'm free from the bondage of doubt. Whenever I think about my past and where I used to be and who I used to be, I doubt myself and I doubt where I stand. But I thank God my identity ain't found in Josh Brown. My identity is not found in who I am. My identity is found in a man named Jesus. And because I'm a new man in him, I don't ever have to doubt who I am again. Second of all, we are free from the bondage of distress. Distress means to be fear. Distress means to be lost. My Bible says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I thank God, Brother Jeff, it said, it says right there, Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again in the bondage, in the yoke of bondage. I'm glad to know that the Lord found me where I was bound, but I never have to go back. I don't have to be bound again. I don't have to turn to the sin again. I don't have to turn to the world again. I'm free from fear. I'm free from distress. I'm free from being lost, even when again. It's bad. I never have to go back. I've been breathing with that mask on so long I forgot what oxygen felt like. It's crazy. And number three, I'm free from the bondage of defeat. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I know the world we're in today is in a pretty rough shape. We're in a bad shape. The country's on its way to hell in a handbasket. And it feels like all we got before us is a big old loss. It feels like all we got before us is a big old pile of defeat. But let me be clear about one thing. It doesn't matter if the country goes to hell tomorrow. It doesn't matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat in office. It doesn't matter what laws are passed and what laws are vetoed. This world can become a communist country in the morning, but I will not be defeated. There is nothing this world can do to take away my victory. I'm a winner either way. I'm not a winner in who I am. I'm not a winner because I'm great. I'm not a winner because I'm good. I'm a winner because I've got Jesus. And there's nothing this world can do to take that away from me today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So anytime I go and read a verse and when they called me, I, I kind of freaked out. I'm not going to lie. They, especially when they said, hey, it's going to be tomorrow. It bugged me a lot. But what I do when I read a verse or when I read a scripture, I have to break it down. That's just who I am. That's what I am. I can't, I can't do anything without breaking things down and dissecting things. And when I read this, I wanted, you know, I said, God, what do you want? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to get out, God? What, what is it that you're trying to show me? And he stopped me, so I started, I started looking at the verse, the time that it was written, the things that were going on and that, and then it, it, it hit me. It said, God said, who wrote it? And that's when it broke me. See, Paul wrote this, and Paul used to be Saul. See, if you don't know what Paul was before, or if you don't know what Paul was when he was Saul, you don't get this at all. You don't get this. See, Paul grew up, he was from a very wealthy family. We see him in Acts 13, he's making tents, but that's not who he was before. Before he comes through a very, 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 very wealthy family. His family and his dad, he would make leather and he would make purses and he'd make tents and he'd make all these lavish things for these rich people. And he sent his son off, he sent Saul off to get to the best schools, to the best teachers, to the best places, to the best things in the world. And Saul... He become, he become a, a really, really good student, and they seen that, and they, they said, well, I think we can trust this guy, and we can hire this guy to go kill Christians. We can hire this guy to go arrest people that we don't like and that we don't see fit to be alive, and they sent him off. Well, Paul, he started growing well, or Saul, he started growing well, started growing all these things and all these different things in his life, and this is the man who wrote this verse, the same man I was. Two years ago, the same man I was three years ago, the same man you were, the same man you were three, four years ago. It's not just Paul. It's not just Saul. It can be Brennan. It can be Harrison. It can be Jeff. It could be Tyler. It could be any of us. The same man that was dragging these Christians to hell is going to be the same man that's helping these Christians in the end, like us. And I love this verse, and I love looking at it and love dissecting it, because all of a sudden on the road to Damascus, Jesus shows up out of the middle of nowhere. Aren't you glad that Jesus showed up in your life like he did Saul? But there's two things I want to look at really quick in Paul's life that I absolutely love is the bondage. There's two sides of this bondage. You see, there's a victim of bondage. That's what Saul was. 
See, bondage, when you're the victim, will bring waste that you didn't know was there. It'll bring, it'll bring regrets that you didn't know were there. It'll be, bring things up in your life that you didn't even know that's there. See, the funny thing about bondage is it's slavery that's involuntary. You didn't voluntarily say, hey, I want to be in bondage. Hey, pick me, pick me. I want to be that guy. Hey, Satan, come by my house. Pick me. Satan, come get me addicted to drugs. Satan, I want to be an alcoholic. Please come see me. See, we don't do that. We don't wake up one morning and say, hey, I want to be in bondage. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't go down like that. See, I wish it would have went like that because I promise you, if it would have, I wouldn't have went down the same roads I went down. See, but there's this other side to bondage that we see in Paul. Not Saul, but with Paul. See, there's a victim, but there's a victor. There's somebody that's already defeated this thing. His name is Christ. And when Christ shows up in your life, you don't become a victim anymore. You become a victor of this bondage. See, old things have passed away, and all things become new, just like Josh said. See, there's new things in Paul's life that he never knew he had. There's new things in Paul's life that he thought, this was it. No, no, this is it. This is where I want to be. I don't want to be what I was back then. It could have been the money. It could have been the fame. It could have been the fortune. It could have been anything in Saul's life that he had here. But nope, we see him over here making tents because he's following the Lord. See, bondage is going to take a lot of things from you, but I promise you, when Jesus shows up, those things ain't going to matter no more. See, the drugs don't matter no more. The alcohol doesn't matter no more. As long as me and my house is serving him, I'm good to go. As long as that little girl right there sitting on that pew, I'm good to go. See, you might want to carry your family to hell and carry your daughter to hell or father to hell or whatever the case may be. But I promise you, honey, one day you're going to wake up and there's going to be a thrice holy God sitting on the throne. And he's not going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. That's when it's too late. And I promise you, you don't want to wake up there. You want to be the victor on this side, not the victim. Okay, so at the verse um, in Galatians 5, 1, the part where it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. I want to um, look into the word liberty. If you Google the word liberty, it says the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one day, on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. Um, so liberty, the definition of that is the state of being free. Um, so obviously, we've all heard the phrase, um, America, land of the free, right? Um, what's funny is, uh, I didn't get three points in a poem. I didn't get anything like that. I didn't get any points. Um, I really just got a question. Um, and it kind of ties into what the preacher was preaching this morning. Um, as I was saying, liberty um, is the state of being free. And if we look around today, we take the saying, America, land of the free. We look around today, that's not really the case in a lot of places. Um, there's a time when that flag used to mean something. There's a time when the national anthem used to mean something. And now we go to football games and all the players are kneeling. If you don't kneel for the national anthem, you're a racist. Um, there's a player, um, most of you guys should know him, his name is Drew Brees. A couple weeks ago, he talked about uh, how it was disrespectful to kneel for the flag. And um, he got a ton of hate, a ton of flack from the media. He was called a racist by his own teammates, by his own coaches, by everything. And a couple days after that, he comes out with this thing and he says, okay, I'm sorry. And he apologized for talking about the national anthem. He apologized for what was right. And um, so the question I have today, um, it was nothing big, nothing um, great or anything like that, but um, when it comes down to it, as the preacher was saying this morning, when they start taking the church, when they start taking our songs, they start taking our worship, are we going to just give in a couple days later and say we're done? Or are we going to stand up and we're going to use our liberty that God has gave us? Well, I'm tired after watching Josh a while ago. Amen. But uh, Nathan just had you, uh, or just read it to you, the definition of liberty. In this verse, uh, there was two words that stuck out to me, liberty and again. This verse is talking to the Christian. It's not talking to a lost man. Here at the uh, latter part of this verse, it says, Be not tangled again 
with the yoke of bondage, which means he's already set us free. He's already took us out of the pits of hell. We're not on our way to hell no more. I mean, we know what it's like to be free. We know what it's like to have liberty in our life. We know what it's like to be uh, pardoned from our sins. We know what it's like not to have that baggage on our back no more. And I don't know anybody in their right mind that would want to go back to being free and, and go back to a place to where they're bound up, they're crippled up, and they're having to suffer and, and work to get to what they need to do. I don't know anybody in their right mind that would want to go back to that place. But this verse teaches us right here that we do it. You know, we, we, as, we as humans sometimes, we're fickle creatures. And, and, and we will put ourselves in positions, not God, not even the devil. We give the devil too much credit sometimes. But we ourselves will put us in positions and places that we bring that yoke back on us. We bring that bondage back on us and God showed me this as I was studying last night the definition of liberty as Nathan said the state of being free and what I find about this liberty is is that it's a powerful liberty it's a powerful liberty it has the power to keep us from the bondage of our past there's no bondage in my future there is no bondage everybody that is sitting under the sound of my voice right now there is no bondage in your future the only bondage that's in your life is past mistakes the devil don't know what you're going to do tomorrow only God knows what you're going to do tomorrow and the devil is not as good or as powerful as God is so only God knows what decisions you're going to make tomorrow because he gave us a free will so the devil can only take against you what you did in your past now if you know as well as I do that this thing right here if I could get rid of anything it would be my memories why because it's my memories that haunt me when I'm laying in bed at night it's my memories that keep me up at night we talk about having nightmares but guess what my nightmares consist of the memories that I have we talk about PTSD but guess what the PTSD is the memories I have of being in Afghanistan the thing that haunts us the most is the memories our ha we have of our past but this liberty that Christ offers us has the power to keep us from that you know what I found out I I, I, I battle, I've never been ashamed of it, I've, I've battled PTSD since 2011 and uh, had all kind of sleeping issues and we was on a men's fishing trip one time and me and the pastor was talking, he was giving me a hard time, he's always giving me a hard time, I don't know when he's telling the truth, when he's being serious or when he's joking anymore, he just always gives me a hard time and he told me, he said, you know, if you just give that thing to God, you'd get over it, I wanted to throat punch him. He said, if you just give it to God, you'll get over it. Well, I took his challenge. You know, I still have some issues, Mr. Voda. But that was five years ago. My past has no yoke, no bondage over me. You know, the reason why we hold on to things in our life is because we're too scared to let go of it because it's comfortable to us. We're too scared to let go of our comfort zone we're too scared to let go of the things that we're used to we're too scared to let go of what's familiar to us but if we would just take the challenge of give it to God and let God be God then we would understand that there's a lot of things in our lives that we're able to overcome and that the bondage is not as familiar as it should be because the Bible says that God don't give us the spirit of fear so anything that you're fearful of anything that's haunting you from your past Harrison it's not coming from God but it's coming from the devil to keep you in a place that you can't reach your full potential you can't be the man that God wants you to be you can't do the things that God wants you to do you can't preach the way God wants you to preach you can't sing the way God wants you to sing you can't praise God the way God wants you to praise him you know we get in our church house and we'll get into our prayer closets and we'll come to an altar and we'll beg and we'll seek the face of God but yet we're too ashamed to sit on a pew and throw a hand up and guess what that's in the yoke of bondage I find that it's a powerful bondage but not only do I find that it's a powerful bondage I find that it's a present bondage it's not for tomorrow the liberty I said a present bondage it's a present liberty it, the liberty that God's offering us right now is not for tomorrow I'm going to need a new liberty tomorrow I'm going to need something clean tomorrow I'm going to need something refreshed tomorrow I'm going to need something tomorrow that could not do for me today I'm going to be battling something that I'm not battling right now I'm going to be dealing with a complication tomorrow that I'm not going to be dealing with right now guess what 
what? Right now, I'm in a pretty good place. Today, this is the second time that I've gotten to mount a pulpit and preach today. I'm doing pretty good today. But guess what? Tomorrow, I could wake up on the wrong side of the bed because you know as well as I do that we're fleshly individuals and we base everything that we do off of our emotions. And if we ain't feeling good in the morning, then guess what? We're going to have a bad day because I guess because we wake up in a bad mood, God ain't as good tomorrow as he was yesterday. And so I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to make everybody around me as miserable as I am. I ain't going to praise God. I ain't going to tell nobody about God. I'm going to make sure that everybody, including my wife and my family, just as mad as I am. Why? Because I have to understand that what did for me yesterday is not going to do for me tomorrow. I need a present liberty. And thirdly, I find that it's not only a powerful liberty, it's not only a present liberty, but it is a protecting liberty. And I thought Graham or Nathan, I don't know which one it was, but I thought they were just going to preach this point a while ago. But this liberty protects us from ourselves. Not only does it protect us from ourselves, but it protects us from our enemies. This liberty can never be taken. Do you realize that the entire, the entire description or the entire definition of liberty says the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life. Which means if you allow the devil to defeat you today, if you allow the devil to defeat you tomorrow, guess what? That ain't God's fault. That's your fault. If you allow the enemy to walk into your house and take your victory, guess what? That's not the devil's fault. That's your fault. If you allow the government to rule and reign in your life, guess what? That ain't the government's fault. That is your fault. This this, this liberty right here that we find in Christ, it is a uh, protecting liberty, which means that in, once you find it, you don't got to let go of it. Uh, there's a song out there that says, um, you could take the Bible out of schools. I may not be quoting it right. You can take Bibles out of school. You can take the Ten Commandments off the walls. But you can't take it out of my heart. You know, it's easy to forget, but the, the, the holiday that we celebrated yesterday, I know what that cost. I've seen it firsthand. There, there's men and women right now that we tend to forget about because it's not over uh, uh, media no more that are still fighting for your freedom to sit in that gray chair that you're sitting in right now. Uh, but also those men and women that are over there fighting are given the same ones that are protesting the liberty and the right to protest. That's what they're fighting for, for freedom of speech. That's what we fight for is for the liberties that you enjoy every single day. But more important than what my brothers and sisters that are still overseas fighting, God paid that price for you to have liberty. God paid a price for you to have victory. God paid a price for you to have freedom. God paid a price for you to have victories, not just one victory, victories in your life. God paid a price for you to be free. The Bible says, and it's our church verse, that he came to give us life, but not just life, but a more abundant life. What does that more abundant life mean? I live life. I live life every single day. But guess what? There ain't no life like doing what I'm doing right now. There, there ain't no life like serving God. I'll get up and, 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 well, I can't say that anymore. I used to get up and I would put my Terminex uniform on and I would drive to a little job and I would collect a paycheck. And actually, I loved what I'd done. Guess what? That's living life. But it's those moments that I watched God took me in his hand and used me as a tool as nobody else could. When those moments happen in your life that God's using you as a tool in his hands, that is that more abundant life. So my question to you tonight is, how's your liberty in Christ? Liberty was paid for with a price that you couldn't pay. The price for you to live in America and have the freedoms that you have, none of y'all paid that price. Somebody else did. Guess what? I served overseas, but I didn't pay that price. Somebody else did. And the price that was paid for the liberty in Christ was paid for, and it was steep. It cost a lot. It cost a mother her son. It cost a friend. It cost a brother. You know, we look at Jesus and we talk about him paying that ultimate sacrifice and him being God and being the Trinity. And we, But guess, there was a mama standing at the foot of the cross that just lost her son. Now, I don't know, the Bible don't say this, but me being a parent myself, how much, am I good, Tyler? Me being a parent myself, 30 seconds, me being a parent myself, I don't know what it would be like to see my son hanging on a cross as much as I knew what his price that he was paying was for many, many people. I don't know if I'd have wanted him to pay it. Guess what? She never tried to stop him because it was Brenda 
was the one that he was helping. Pastor Tim was the one that he was helping. Your liberty cost a price. I got this one. Amen. That's pretty good stuff, wasn't it? I mean, did you get the message tonight? Amen. Free to do the impossible with action. So you ain't got to doubt it because you are a victor of bondage. So the question is, what are you going to do today? Because your tomorrow depends upon it. What you do today, the decision you make today, the decision we make today, the decision we make today, our future depends on it. What we're willing to let go of today, you'll let go of even more tomorrow. You hear what I'm saying? But what you're willing to stand for today, you'll stand for tomorrow. And you'll look back at yesterday and realize you made it with that stance. So you know what you'll do? You'll stand a little firmer. Stand a little firmer. Man, I could go on. Them guys gave me enough stuff to preach. I could preach for another hour, but I'm not. Amen. Amen. You know what? Jay reminded me of a little leprechaun dude. With that beard. Amen. We need to take up a collection to get that poor uh, beer cut. Amen. He reminds me of a little leprechaun, a little old man standing up here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some of y'all ain't laughed all day. Amen. Now you're going to have a forever, uh, a forever picture of Jay Dorman, a little leprechaun. Amen. He should have wore a green coat tonight. Amen. It would have fit perfect. Amen. Let's give these guys a hand of praise. Why? Because I know. I know the pressure. The pressure they was put up under yesterday afternoon when they received uh, the texts and the calls uh, about preaching. And uh, from there on all the way up to they was able to relieve their burden. And, uh, and I appreciate them doing it. I appreciate their study. I appreciate what they gave uh, us tonight. Amen. I appreciate the liberty. The liberty that we have. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Before we go tonight, we'll do like we always do. We'll take up an offering at the back door, side door for handicap. But we need to continue to pray for uh, Mr. John Hardy. Last I talked to my sister a little while ago, he's facing a heart catheterization in the morning. And uh, they hadn't told us yet if he's already had a heart attack, but they do know he is threatening one. And uh, so they're going to do a heart cat in the morning. And uh, so you be praying for him. And, uh, and also, we want to pray for Brother Jeff's daughter, Miss Brenda's granddaughter, Jody. She has uh, been diagnosed positive uh, with COVID-19, uh, with COVID-19, so we need to lift her up. Uh, they're safe. They're fine. Uh, she's been down in Georgia, uh, so you ain't got to worry about uh, them, you know, being around her with that, nothing like that. But uh, Brother Jeff requested that we pray for her, and, uh, and it's getting closer. It's getting closer. How many of y'all know somebody personally? that has uh, contacted COVID-19. So just about the majority majority of the church, amen. And uh, so let's pray for these, and uh, that they'll recover and uh, be fine and well. And uh, I don't forgot how long it lasts. It don't last, what, three or four or five days, but they're contagious for about 14 or something like that. So uh, it should be good, amen. He said it's like the flu, what she's going through and all that stuff that they tell us about. So let's pray for her. Let's pray for one another. And, uh, and listen, listen, take what you've heard tonight. Take what you heard tonight and what you heard this morning and, and, and meditate on it. Do like Brother Graham was preaching. Take that word, meditate on it, think on it, pray on it, and let it be in your digestive system, and you'll find out that will be, that will be what carries us through the Word of God, the Word of God. We all have memories. Jay was just talking about those memories. We all have memories of good times, right? Good times. We've all had some good vacations, ain't we? But ain't nobody's vacation this year been, been the best they've ever had in their life because everywhere you go, you got to deal with that mess called COVID, called COVID. Either something ain't open, something closed down, something's at 50%. Or you got to give your order with a mask on or to be, or to be taken. It's always something, always something. Life just ain't the same. But listen, one thing that never changes, and his name is God, the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I am the way, 
the truth in the life. Amen. Just because we're in the midst of all of this don't mean we got to stop living. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Remember uh, Wednesday night, midweek Bible study, 630. Uh, look around, see who's missing. There's still some that's out celebrating, having vacations and enjoying the, the weekend uh, of the 4th. And uh, there's some that are sick, so let's pray for them. But do remember Mr. Hardy, do remember Miss Jody, and uh, any others that may be on your heart, let's lift them up. We'll pray, and uh, we'll be dismissed. Uh, I know you can't shake hands like we always do, but let's give these guys one more round of applause for their effort. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody go over 10 minutes, Tyler? Me? I ain't preaching. I went on a time limit. Amen. Amen. My Bible ain't even in the pulpit. Amen. Oh, it ain't but 547. Amen. Really? Amen. Amen. He's, he wonders why. He asked the question. He's always giving me a hard time. See? I always got an excuse. That's why you got to give him a hard time. I always got an excuse. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. God, we love this church. We love these guys behind us and these peoples before us. And God, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God, for the encouragement we received tonight to stand fast. God, Lord, we're not a victim anymore. We're a victor. And God, Lord, we can just live our life to please you, Lord. Nothing to worry about but pleasing you, walking with you, fellowshipping with you. I pray, Lord, tonight, Lord, for these. God, Lord, that's in the hospital. I pray, Lord, for John as you got to be with him. Be with Dr. Shug off tomorrow, God, as he does that catheterization on him. I pray, God, that whatever the problem is, is something they could fix, Lord, with a stent. Very easy procedure, God, Lord, in a sense. Whole lot better than a heart, uh, than a heart surgery, God. So I pray, God, that'll be uh, 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 done tomorrow morning. I pray, God, Lord, for Miss Jody, you be with her, God. She continues to battle COVID. I pray, God, you continue to protect these. God, Lord, we know of somebody, but we hadn't contacted it yet. So you be with us, protect us, allow us to be the one that you be pleased with. In Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people say, amen, amen. You're at liberty.